All right, so sitting up straight, palms at the center of your chest. Close your eyes down. Breathe down the spine into the earth. Exhale. Center yourself. Inhale. Exhale. And we'll inhale to tune in with the Adi Mantra. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale deeply. Om. Apply root lock, so bring the energy up from the root of the spine, tailbone tucks under, you're clenching the muscles at the perineum, bring that energy up, exhale, relax. Bring the hands down to the knees. We'll just warm up the spine a little. Do wide rotations. Just the long, deep breaths. You'll be serenaded by the lovely Jaya Lakshmi. (laughs) Anytime there's tough moments, you just tune into the music. You just tune into the sweetness. Throughout this practice, we'll just keep our eyes closed. We'll focus the eye up and stimulate the frontal lobe and the pituitary gland by keeping the eyes closed, but focusing up in the third eye. And one of the yogic techniques is to keep the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And as you're breathing in, you're inhaling and mentally chanting Sat. And as you're exhaling, you're mentally chanting Nam. Sat, truth, Nam is our essence. So that's your internal japa. That's the tool for the mind. Keep it focused. We have the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, the eyes focused to the third eye, mantra running, and long deep breaths. These are all techniques that Yogi Bhajan gave to us to have the full Kundalini Yoga experience. He said that's, he taught this type of yoga to give you an experience of yourself, of your infinity, your eternal self. And switch directions.
Come center, inhale. Exhale. And bring the knees, hands to the knees, and we'll just spinal flex. Chest comes forward, chest goes back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Big, powerful breaths. Loosening up the spine, getting ready for one of my all time favorite sets. Okay, inhale, straight spine. Hold the breath. Again, apply root lock, bring the energy up. Exhale, relax. So we're gonna move into a Kriya called abdominal strength. Is everyone excited? I just love these sets. First of all, the abdominal sets are typically the hardest ones to do on your own. So it's always great to do with a group because then you have that, that umph for the group to go like, yes, I'm going to do this. And, um, and then we have the music. So we'll have just the sweetness going through this navel strengthening. And, and it's just important to understand why Yogi Bhajan in particular, but many of the yoga traditions emphasize on the navel center. And the navel center is that seat of, you know, at a physical level, it is what supports our whole spine and our whole core. You know, so if you want to have a nice healthy spine, you want to have a nice strong navel center. And then it also relates to the digestive system. And that relates to how we're digesting and processing our foods, but also, of course, how we're digesting all the things that are coming at us in life. And we need to be able to digest it and release it, okay? And then at an energetic level, it's the seat of the fire, the third chakra, the agni. And that fire is that which really ignites and lets you digest. And in a sense of, in the most kind of a spiritual context that is there's three things that the yogi said is very necessary one is ojas ojas is typically more relates to the second chakra and, and it's kind of the the essence of creativity and then agni is the second element that you need the fire of transformation and then the third is prana and in this case it comes through the air and so this is it's basically like you're going through an alchemical process of fire and transformation. And those three elements are needed. And so that's what well, we're doing this yogic practices. And when you're talking about actual spiritual transformation, this is the elements the yogis talked about are the kind of the key essences that you need to have. You need to have that potent creative consciousness that's just let is there and you're going to activate it. and that's why we're using a lot of these the bandhas and raising energy up not only for the kundalini but what the yogis called ojas which is this this subtle energy that's this is a subtle creative source of energy 
So we're using that ojas and then we're moving it up and into the fire, the agni here. And then with the breath, and there's going to be a lot of breath of fire in this set, that's what really pumps it. Just like you're going to create a fire in your system, like you create the fire for transformation. And then after that, we're going to move into another set called a kriya for uh, the strength to sacrifice. And we'll go, I'll talk more about that later, and we'll do a few meditations to wrap up our whole journey. But to give you an experience of, of really what the alchemy that takes place in a yoga experience like this, in a workshop, where you really, you get a tangible effects, and you get the experience so that you leave going, whoa, right? Okay, so needless to say, all the exercises we're going to do are two minutes long. So that's nice to know, right? Let's see. I won't leave you in that wonderland of, oh my God, where? How long? <laughs> two minutes, okay? We start easy, then it ramps up, gets harder, then it kind of gets easy, and then it gets harder, okay? So easy one. First, we start hands interlaced behind our head, at the, actually a little on the neck, and then you're just going to sit here and close your eyes down. And I believe, yeah, you're doing breath of fire. So just begin breath of fire. Oh, one more thing. You're actually on your heels, so come onto your, onto your, onto your knees. There you go. Great. Yeah. If this is too uncomfortable for you, you can come back into easy pose. I like to sit on my cushion too to give my ankles a little bit of a break. Great. In the breath of fire, typically the mantra that's used is Satanama. So that's what you're mentally chanting as you're going through this practice with breath of fire. Band, seal the energy. That's what these locks do. They seal the energy. They move the energy up and seal it. Exhale. Relax. And then just come forward onto your bellies. And then you're going to reach back and grab your ankle, bring your ankles up. And you're not going to come into a bow pose, actually. It's just holding onto your ankles, your belly, and your knees, your thighs are still flat. So you're just holding on and just long, deep breaths here. Nice and simple. Long, deep breaths. I'm 
If you know this one, you can sing along. Satanam, 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 Ji. Why Guru, why Guru, why Guru, why Guru, Ji. Satanam, 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 Ji. Why Guru, why Guru, why Guru, why Guru, Ji. Satanam, 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 Ji. Why Guru, why Guru, why Guru. And inhale. Exhale, release the legs. And then roll on over to your backs. And we're going to move into the very infamous and everybody's favorite stretch pose. Two minutes. So, for those of you who don't know it, it's your feet are together. Six inches off the ground, back comes up six inches off the ground, hands up, and begin breath of fire. Great. Yes, you can. You just do what you can. You need to come down, come down, but do your best to stay up. Feel that core. Use that breath. Power through it. When you want to come down, you breathe a little bit harder. And you see if you can stick up a little bit longer. <clears throat> if it's just too much for the lower spine, you can put your hands underneath your bottoms or make some adjustments. If you can, just stay up. Say Wahi Guru. Wahi Guru. Say Wahi Guru. All right, keep going. You got a minute. <laughs> The ultimate for transformation here. Last 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, 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 one. Inhale. Exhale, release. Wahi Guru. How was that? That's always one of my favorite. Just feel the, feel the energy disperse. Feel that navel and then let it disperse. Great. And we're going to move right into bicycle motion with your legs and long deep breathing. So you're just flying flat and the legs just come up, knees alternating coming up. Hands underneath the bottom will give you a little more support for your spine. This is a great one for circulating the energy of the first three chakras. Good for the hips and the knees, ankle joints. Make sure you're rotating those feet and the knees. If you know this one, sing along. Ekonkar Satanam Siri Wahe Guru. It's nice to sing in bicycle at the same time.
inhale and relax the legs down. Take one deep breath. And then both legs are going to come up to 90 degrees. Bottoms stay on the ground, so the tailbone stays on the ground. And then back to the earth. Okay, and again, hands underneath the bottom will support your spine a little more. So feet up to 90 degrees and back down. Oh, yes. Point those toes, keep those thighs straight, strong thighs, strong core. Keep that core flat. Great, you guys are doing a great job. Yes, powerful breath. Inhale as you lift the legs up, exhale as you release the legs down. If this is no problem for you, you just sing along. Yogi Bhajan said this particular exercise is good for moving the energy up the spine, up into the upper chakras. Doing great. 20 more seconds. Bring those legs straight up to the sky. Hold it. Exhale. Go down as slow as possible. Oh, yes. Beautiful. All right. Lovely. Breathe into your navel. Let that energy distribute. Let the prana distribute. like one of my ultimate favorite sequences that Yogi Bhajan gave. You'll see that a few times in different kriyas, the stretch pose, the bicycle to the leg lifts. Mm. Then you're going to roll on over to your bellies. And... We're gonna gonna come into a unique uh, cobra pose. So you're gonna come up, and obviously certain people have the spines too much, like sensitive. So maybe you're just here, but you want to keep the feet up, and then if you can, you're gonna just raise up, and you're gonna hold this, okay? And this is done with just long deep breathing okay two minutes so find your spot and maybe you just start gentler and then if it loosens up for you you can go up a little higher okay just be very careful with your spine long deep breaths Breathe down the spine. Fingertips spread nice and wide, root into the earth. You're sensitive to the energies of the earth. Visualize or feel the energies coming from the earth 
up through the palms into your arms, sustaining you, bringing the energy up to sustain you. slowly exhale and release down and come onto your bellies if your spine is feeling a little tender you can rock your hips from side to side all right next one's fun we get to just roll on over to your backs and you're gonna roll rock front and back on your spine now if you can you'll want to keep the knees as close to the chest as you can that'll keep your navel engaged and just rock on the spine loosen up the spine loosen up the muscles distribute the prana all along the spine Rock and roll, people. You want to sing along? It's the Guru Gayatri Mantra. Try it. Go binde mukande udare apare aliyam kariyam best keep those knees tucked to your chest feel that core yeah that's better yes it's very therapeutic Maybe you're having flashbacks of when you were like six you used to do this. Bring out your inner child here. Yogi Bhajan was good about that. He brought back some things that we used to do when we were little kids. Little did we know that it was therapeutic. Okay. And relax. Just relax. Lay down. Lay on your back. Long deep breaths. Ah. And then when you're ready, come on to your bellies. So roll back over onto your bellies. Now we're going to go into 
the flying Hanuman pose. So your belly's going to be on the ground. Your legs lift up just slightly off the ground. Your arms come forward. Ideally, Yogi Bhajan said to bring your palms together. So you're like this in locust pose. This is quite a posture. So I tend to eat a little bit easier here, even more easier here. Okay? Uh, just do what you can. If that's just too much in your lower spine, you just relax and have a little time on your belly. But if you can, that's what you're going to do. And breath of fire is what's called for. So here we go. Two minutes. See what you can do. Get your superhero strength out here. Fly. Fly into your dharma. Yes, powerful breath. The breath of fire is just is said to enhance the benefits of any posture. You're circulating prana that much more throughout the whole entire system. The nervous system relaxes. The blood is full of oxygen. Detoxifying through the out-breath. Pranifying through the in-breath. That's a new word, pranifying. Great job. One more minute. Powerful breath. Ten seconds. Inhale, hold it. Consolidate. Exhale, relax. Oh, yes. That strengthening of those muscles in the lower back is such a great thing because the lower back tends to be often the one that causes us problems. The tailbone, L1, L1 through L5 are pretty much, for most people, destined to be problematic at one point in your life. This next one might be pushing you to point where you don't want to go and that's okay but if you can you're going to reach back and grab your ankles and this time we're actually going to go into bow pose and you're going to begin breath of fire okay if it's just too much you just hang tight relax but if you can you reach up grab up and lift those thighs lift the chest up and breath of fire Powerful one for centering the energy at the navel center, strengthening the lower back. Very good for the digestive system. Opens up the chest, opens up the heart center. If you can, keep those knees about shoulders width apart. Keep those thighs strong. Keep the shoulder blades tucked towards each other. That'll help you raise up. can it's better actually to keep the feet active so the toes pointing back towards the back of the room there you go yes great great job yogis one more minute Ah, 
Satanama. Satanama with the breath. Last ten seconds. Inhale, hold it. Exhale, release. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah, rock the hips out. We're going to come up to a standing position. I don't know if I need to stand up here. <laughs> Too high. Feet are nice and close together. Arms out wide. We're just doing side stretches. So stretch up. Other side. Inhale center. Exhale to each side. tell this is a pretty focused set for the core the lower back the side just kind of this whole middle torso of the body this is where the lower body meets the upper body it's so important for this to be strong limber Flexible. Free to sing along if you like. Chant for healing, Ramadasa. Okay, make this your last round each side. And then come up. Arms still out. Now we're going to sides uh, open up the chest. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. We've reached the casual part of the Kriya. I have to warn you, we do end with a bang on this Kriya. So just prepare yourself for that. Enjoy these slow moments, sweet moments. Chant your healing in Ramadasa.
just nice for clearing the energy in front of the heart center. Opening up the heart center. Okay, inhale, open both the arms up, stretch back, open up the chest. Big deep breath. Exhale, release the hands down. I'm going to do miracle bends here for two minutes. Arms raise up to the sky, hinging from the hips down. Try to keep your spine as straight as possible. And then back up, using the core to lift you up. Thighs and core activated and keep bending down. And just continue. Use this moment to be in deep reverence. Yes, great. Beautiful. It's your last round. Let you stretch way back. And then as you exhale, come forward. Stretch the back of the legs one more time. Hold it out. Exhale, hold the breath out. And when you need to inhale, you can relax and we'll actually be coming onto our backs again. So come down and lie down. Quite time for the dance party yet, but okay. Come back and we're gonna do the piston motion again with the legs. So one knee up, then the other knee up back. It's just bicycle type. It's more of a piston motion though. Knees come up and then back down. Yeah, great. This is the part of the Kriya that might will probably test you. So just do your breath best to just breathe through it. Move through the negative mind.
along to would be good. Okay, and relax. And we go back into leg lifts for two more minutes. Hands on the bottoms, if you like, for support. Both legs together, toes pointing up, thighs strong, navel strong, lift legs up and down. Lakshmi's gonna play something you can sing along to. Bring the joy in. Sing along, bountiful, bountiful, I am beautiful, I am blissful, to come up and come into Sat Kriya. Just two minutes. Two minutes is the theme here. And Yogi Bhajan asked that in this particular version of Sat Kriya that we actually keep our palms together. Men, you'll left, uh, right thumb will be over your left and women, your left thumb will be over your right. And then you just bring it right over the head. And when you're ready, begin sat. Uh, the navel comes in. Nam, you relax. Sat, nam. 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 Sat. Nam Sat 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 Sit, no, sit, no, sit, no, 
Apply root lock, navel lock, chin lock. Consolidate the energy. And exhale, relax. Relax the hands. This is a little bit of a bizarre set because usually after Sat Kriya, it's typically a relaxation. And this one, he amps it up. And we end, this is the last, last pose, but we end with boat pose with breath of fire. <laughs> so this is for you gung ho people. You bring the feet up and you're here. Breath of fire. <laughs> Last two minutes. You just rock it out. You can do it. Yes, you can. Wahe Guru. Timer is going. core. He set the standard pretty high at times to get us yogis really, really disciplined, really strong in our bodies. seconds. Just relax. Lay back. Lay back. Woo! Beautiful. All right, so that's an example of a Nabi Kriya that maybe kicked your butt. Maybe really tightened up those abs. Ignited the fire. Now you just relax. Deeply relax. Allow the energy to circulate throughout the whole body. Thank yourself. Thank your body. Go into 
deep appreciation for your stomach muscles and your navel center, your digestive system, your back muscles and spinal cord. Beautiful. And when you're ready, begin wiggling the toes and the fingers, rolling the hands on the wrists and the feet on the ankles a few times in each direction. Stretch the hands over the head and stretch the body long. right knee up to your chest and bring it over to the opposite side, opening up the hips and lower back. And switch sides. Hmm. And then when you're ready,
body bring, come back up, lift up the feet, rub the bottoms of the feet and the palms together. The palms cover the cover the eyes. slowly release and then bring the hands to the shins and rock on the spine front and back and rock your way up to sitting Just take a few deep breaths here and just sit with yourself and just notice the changes that have taken place. We're going to move into a Kriya. It's like a breath work and meditation. And it's for anybody who ever struggles with their mind. Does anybody struggle with their mind? <laughs> Great. So this is for you, for all of us. So the, the mudra is like this. We have the knuckles coming in, but we bring the thumbs in, so we grab the thumbs, and then the knuckles are facing each other. And they're right here at this chest level. Okay? This is called caliber for constant self-authority. Okay? And the breath is like this. You inhale through the nose. Exhale with a pursed lips. So it's... And then you... Inhale through the mouth. Exhale through the nose. Okay. Eyes are focused at the tip of the nose. One-tenth. The eyes are just open. One-tenth open. So you're just right here at the tip of the nose. Inhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through pursed lips. Inhale through the mouth. Exhale through the nose. Great, and continue. Some of you need to look up here and just make sure you have the mudra right. So you, you want the, the second knuckles touching. So not the very first ones, but the second ones. Nope. No, no, no. Check it out. So you're grabbing your thumbs and then not these first ones, but the second ones. Nope. Going the wrong way. Keep going this way. There you go. Yeah, you want those ones. Oh, like um, yeah, exactly. You want to not this one, but this, that one. Yeah, there you go. There. Yes. You want those touching. <laughs> there you go. Good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, and, but uh, kind of so you can see your thumbs. Good. 
Great. Okay. Everybody else is good. Make this your last round, so whatever you're inhale when you inhale through your nose, and you can relax. Just relax. So Yogi Bhajan gave us these tools because he knew how much we struggle with our minds. We struggle to keep the caliber, to keep constant, to have authority. Because Yogi Bhajan said, you know, you can go through life with a leash on your mind or your mind with a leash on you. And this is incredibly potent because so much of our lives are dictated through our subconscious and unconscious processes. And to a certain degree, that's a blessing. That's a good thing because we don't want to have to consciously think about every time how to tie our shoes or to throw on our jacket. We have to consciously be there. There's kind of routine. Um, but in those routines, obviously a lot of negative patterns can build and as yogis we're developing that capacity and the caliber to be conscious when we're slipping or when we've gone into those unconscious moments and how to quickly come back and for me that's why the naval center in particular is such an important one for us to to develop and to keep practicing I feel like in a regular, my regular routine throughout the week, I'll try to do one to two navel center uh, kriyas a week. Just to keep that strong navel center, keep that fire there to digest it, but the motivation, the willpower. So many of us also struggle with willpower and, and the capacity to, to follow through, follow through with what we want to do, follow through with our visions follow through with what we feel like is the right thing to do. So all these things are really important. And then the, on the other side is there's so many options. We're bombarded with options, essentially. And Yogi Bhajan taught an important part of this practice of life is the strength to sacrifice to be able to sacrifice certain things for long term, for the long term, the benefits of the long term that you end up deciding what you want to do. And so that tends to be letting go of certain things in the moment that maybe were enticing, but you knew were going to be distracting. We're going to distract you off your path. And this strength to sacrifice was the seventh of a series of seven steps that he said is the keys to happiness. So he said the last step is the strength to sacrifice. So in order to be the long-term happiness, you have to be able to sacrifice. And we know this, but it's always nice to hear it again. So we're going to do a little Kriya for this strength to sacrifice Kriya. Fingertips together, and the fingertips are right, I believe they're at the neck. I just did this morning. The, there's a mantra that Yogi Bhajan gave for this, um, which it's an interesting one, but we're just going to roll with it. And there is God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. And we're going to be here for six minutes. God in me, me and God are one. Let me just 
confirm where we're putting those fingertips. I think they're at the neck, but I'm going to just confirm that. It says keep the fingers tightly together, pressing each other. Um, weird, doesn't say. Okay, well the image shows where it's at the neck. So you're just holding it right here. And eyes closed, chanting, God in me, me and God are one. 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 
God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. God in me, me and God are one. Inhale. So, relax. There's so many sciences that are taking place in this yogic practice. The science of mudras, the energy seals, of mantra and affirmations, eye placement, mudras with the eyes, breath, movement. All the shift consciousness, all the shift you out of your normal, mundane ways. To give you a different perspective, an elevated perspective. Yogi Bhajan said it over and over again. He said, I'm a Saturn teacher. I'm a disciplinarian. You come to me because you want discipline. Because you want the teachings that will transform and give you an experience. An experience of yourself. And Saturn, although it's tough, tends to be perhaps the most profound teacher and really helps us grow through the places that we're stuck. So we're going to use these Saturn fingers and you're going to hold on to the Saturn fingers together and you're going to pull, pull at each other, pull at those Saturn fingers. Pull as hard as you can, a minute and a half, okay? The breath is just relaxed. In one minute, minute and a half, and begin. Pull. 
keep a solid pressure. Activating the energy of Saturn through these middle fingers. Discipline. Discipline helps us in that process of sacrificing. If not, it's too easy to go into every which desire that comes along. It's even trickier when the mind plays out this sense of... Has anybody had that struggle when you even felt like it was the right thing to do and you did it but then you felt like after then you're like wow something's off here I don't feel in alignment actually and so we're refining our capacities we're refining that it takes a lot of intuition it takes a lot of centering Strengthening of the auric field. That way it repels a lot of those unwanted influences so that you can stay centered and aligned with your Dharma and attract things that are aligned with your Dharma. an interesting one too behind the head you're going to grab your wrist and you're just going to hold it here and if you can you're going to press kind of press down not don't make sure it doesn't tweak anything but you have a little pressure holding it down three minutes here Pretty sing along. get it down to the neck that's ideally where it's supposed to get to just holding on to your wrists
last 30 seconds. Right arm comes over the shoulder. Left arm comes behind the back. If you can, grab the fingers of each of those and link up. Link those fingers. If they can't link, that's okay. You could use a strap too, that's another option. Be here for three minutes as well. And there's an added breath to this. So you're inhaling, then you exhale deeply, hold the breath out, and pull the navel lock tightly. Then you relax and repeat the breath. Okay? So you're inhaling, and you exhale, and then you pull the navel in, lifting the energy. Continue. Three minutes. Guys, you're doing great. What is your strength to sacrifice? What do you need to sacrifice? to sacrifice in order to align yourself more with your soul's path.
relax. Make it so hard on ourselves, right? Sacrifice is so hard. I can't sacrifice that because I want to do this. I don't want to do that. But if I just do this, everything's going to be complete. I'm going to feel complete myself. Feel satisfied, fulfilled. Often it's hard to to make the choices for the long term. Those are actually the harder choices, typically. And maybe not at first, but then the continual commitment to those choices. Is where it gets difficult, and that's where we get tested. And then you're getting tested, and there's always a great option somewhere else to choose, right? Distractions. Anybody deal with distractions in their life? <laughs> Anybody know when you 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 have that outlet when you have something you need to do, and then you just kind of go for the distraction instead? Yeah, squirrel. Well, I could do this. I need to do this, but ah, I don't know. I'm hungry now. All of a sudden, I'm hungry. <laughs> wow, I just—I really need something to eat. Or I, gosh, chocolate, coffee, <laughs> um, beach. <laughs> I got to go for a drive. I don't know what's going on, but I got to get out. I got to move. I got to do something. Do something other than stay with myself. That's why we get dogs and cats. <laughs> and they are so sweet. And they're great reminders. What's going to keep us anchored? It's a very difficult task. But it's only as difficult as our minds make it to be. It's only as difficult as our minds make it to be. Because truly, at the soul level, it's so profoundly joyful and nourishing. But the mind wants options, distractions, instant pleasure, instant satisfaction. So it can be difficult to choose the long-term satisfaction. Difficult, as difficult as your mind will make it. This last part of this kriya is really you just stick your legs out and do a forward stretch, and if you can grab your big toes, you do that. You just ah oh, relax, it, stretch it out. Literally says for 10 seconds. I don't even know why he do that for 10 seconds, but there you go. That's a Yogi Bhajan moment. Don't do more than 10 seconds, though. <laughs> okay, and relax. All right, so I just thought that we should just get up and move around a little bit. So just shake it out. Maybe we want to dance a little. You want a little music? <laughs> All right. So just move around the room. Find some way to just meet some people. Connect with somebody. Dance with somebody. Celebrate.
Celebration. Celebration. Find someone to dance with. Put your hands together. Come on, here we go. Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Jio, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Jio, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Let's shake the hips. Shake the hips, shake, 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 like that Brazilian style shake, you know, like the jiggle. Ah. Raise the arms up, shake the arms. Ooh. Spear fingers. All right, and relax. All right, come sitting. Woo! You know, you go through the process, and then you got to celebrate and release. Breathe down the spine. And we'll just finish with this meditation for just your intuition. Just make you that much more stronger with your intuition. That much more disciplined with your mind. You have control of the mind. And... Pretty, it's kind of a cosmic little meditation here. So let me just find it real quick. Yes. Okay. So it says, right hand, thumb, and tip of the little finger come together. Left hand, thumb, and the ring finger come together, and they're out by the side. So right hand, thumb, and mercury finger. Left hand is thumb and ring finger. Okay, so close your eyes down. Focus up at the third eye, and you visualize a beam of light coming into the third eye. Have that beam of light just expanding your intuition, your intuitive capacities. And keeping that light and energy coming through the third eye, 
at the heart center, we're mentally chanting the mantra, Ong Kar, O N G Kar, K A R, Ong Kar. Allow this beam of light to fill you up, fill your intuitive capacities. Let the mantra be like bomb for your heart, opening you up. The right hand has the seal of communication. Mercury finger and the thumb mean representing the ego. Left hand, the sun finger is the ring finger and the thumb. Mars or the ego. Left hand being much more solar, expansive, clear. Just becoming clear with your intentions, clear with your purpose through communication, through your livelihood. Bhajan said this is meditation used to control the mind have the mind follow consciousness instead of the ego this is the very definition of free will and yoga and is every person's right in this life we normally do not use it we reach out of impulse or to escape pain this meditation uses the refinement capacity refined capacity of the mind to rise above pain, reactions, and ego to guide you, your actions from your own free will and consciousness. Let your minds be illumined. your hearts be open. Be open to receive in this moment.
inhale. Exhale, relax the hands down. And bring the hands to the center of your chest, palms together. And we'll close with the sunshine song and long satnams. Oh. Uh...